Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about versioning. When you're creating a bucket in S3, you have the option to enable versioning uh, simply by clicking this option over here. Also, you can enable versioning after you've created a bucket if you didn't enable it in the beginning. Uh, the thing about versioning though is that you cannot disable versioning. So once it's enabled, it's enabled, you can suspend it uh, or you can keep it enabled. Something important to remember. Now, what is versioning all about? Well, let's have a look at an example. Here's uh, a bucket and its contents. And once you've enabled versioning, you'll have this additional menu show version. So if it's off, the bucket will look as normal. You just see the objects. But if it's on, you actually see their prior versions. So what is happening is that as you upload newer versions of your object, S3 is not removing the previous objects. It's not re overriding them. It's still keeping them. So we'll, let's have a look at uh, an example here. For instance, image3.png. So you can see that there's image3, but then under it, there's two more versions of image3. And these versions have their own unique identifiers. Also, you can see the timestamp. So this version was created 11.12 a.m. This one was at 11.14 11 11 a.m. And this one is 11.56. They also have different sizes, but that's not really relevant. The point is that they have different version IDs. So if you turn this off, you'll just see image 3. Um, and whenever you ask for image 3 from uh, the S3 bucket, you will get this most recent version. If you want a later or earlier version, however, then you can... Uh, request image 3 and also supply the version ID. So for instance, if you're doing it programmatically, you can supply the version ID or if you're doing it through this interface, you can just show versions and select the one that you want. So let's have a look at another example here. Uh, for instance, image 5. Image 5 is actually deleted. It was deleted out of this bucket, but because versioning was enabled when that happened, image 5 didn't actually get deleted. It got um, it got a delete marker, it got replaced with a delete marker, so image 5 became an older version. The newest version of image 5 is actually just a delete marker, which also has its own identifier, it's zero bytes. Um, and so to everyone, to the outside world, image 5 will look deleted unless you request specifically for the version ID or you enable this show versions and then you'll see that image 5 is here. And you can restore image 5 by simply deleting this delete marker. Um, another example here is that image 1.png has a version ID of null. And this is important to know. This happens when you already have something in your bucket when you enable versioning. So what happened in this case is I created the bucket. I put image 1 into the bucket. Versioning wasn't enabled and then I enabled versioning. So image 1 comes with a null. If I upload a newer uh, version of image 1, then it will have its own version ID. So anything that's in the bucket when versioning is enabled will have an ID of null. Two more things that are important to note are that you can actually physically permanently delete a specific object, a version of that object. Uh, for instance, if you check a box here when this menu is enabled and you delete a specific a version, it will be permanently deleted. It won't just have a delete mark of it, it'll be permanently deleted. So you can also do that if you really need to, but by default, uh, deletion happens with via delete markers. And the final thing is that all versions, whether current or older versions, take up space. So you can see the size here, and you will be billed by S3, by Amazon, for that space that they're taking up. So something to keep in mind. So there we go, that's object versioning. And here's a quick text summary of this tutorial. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, enjoy the cloud.